The Great Bola Cyclone, which struck in November 1970, is one of the most devastating tropical cyclones in recorded history, particularly due to its impact on the densely populated Ganges Delta region of Bangladesh, then East Pakistan, and West Bengal, India. To comprehend the causes and mechanisms behind this catastrophic event, it's essential to delve into the atmospheric conditions and oceanic interactions that led to its formation and intensification. Tropical cyclones, such as the Bola cyclone, typically develop over warm ocean waters where the sea surface temperature is at least 26 degrees Celsius, 79 degrees Fahrenheit. This cyclone originated in the central bay of Bengal, a region notorious for producing powerful cyclonic storms due to its warm sea surface temperatures and conducive atmospheric conditions. The cyclone began as a tropical disturbance, a broad area of low pressure characterized by thunderstorms and variable winds. As the system moved slowly over the warm waters of the Bay of Bengal, it began to organize more distinctly. The warm water provided the necessary heat and moisture to fuel the storm, leading to the formation of a tropical depression. Once formed, the tropical depression rapidly intensified due to several favorable conditions. Warm ocean waters, the heat from the ocean, is the primary energy source for cyclones. The warmer the water, the more energy is available to power the cyclone. Atmospheric instability. Warm air rising from the ocean's surface encourages convection, vertical movement of air, which helps to ventilate the storm and allows it to draw in more energy. Low wind shear. Low levels of wind shear, which are changes in wind speed or direction with height, are conducive to the formation and sustenance of cyclones. High wind shear can disrupt the structure of a cyclone. As the system strengthened, it developed into a tropical storm and eventually a full-blown cyclonic storm. The process involved the air swirling inwards towards the low pressure at the center, rising as it warmed, then cooling and descending after losing its moisture. This cycle created a self-sustaining system that drew more energy from the warm ocean below. At its peak, the Bola cyclone featured a well-defined eye a calm and clear center surrounded by the eye wall, the most intense part of a cyclone where the highest winds and heaviest rains are located. The eye is formed due to the very low central pressure which causes the surrounding air to rush towards the center then ascend sharply and diverge aloft. The rotation of the storm was further influenced by the Coriolis effect caused by the Earth's rotation which dictates that the storm spins counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere. As it continued to draw energy from the ocean, the cyclone moved slowly northwards, steered by the large-scale atmospheric currents prevailing over the region. As it approached the low-lying coastal regions of the Ganges Delta, the interaction with the landmass began to weaken the storm slightly. However, the sheer size and intensity of the storm meant that it retained much of its destructive power up until landfall. The Great Bola Cyclone's devastating impact was largely due to its immense power, rapid intensification, and the vulnerability of the populated areas in its path. Understanding these mechanisms not only highlights the natural processes involved, but also underscores the critical need for effective disaster preparedness and response strategies in cyclone-prone regions. The Great Bola Cyclone of 1970 is remembered not only for its meteorological significance, but also for the profound human tragedy it caused. Striking East Pakistan, now Bangladesh, and West Bengal, India on November 13, 1970, this cyclone became one of the deadliest natural disasters in modern history. The scale of the damage, in terms of both human casualties and material losses, was staggering, and left deep marks on the region's social fabric and infrastructure. The most harrowing aspect of the Bola cyclone was the immense loss of life. It is estimated that between 300,000 to 500,000 people died as a result of the cyclone. This wide range in estimates reflects the chaotic conditions under which these counts were conducted as well as the complete devastation of many communities that were wiped off the map. The majority of these deaths were due to the massive storm surge that accompanied the cyclone which inundated the low-lying islands and tidal flats of the Ganges Delta. Many victims drowned or were swept away by the waters, while others perished from injuries and exposure in the aftermath. The region's high population density and the fact that many lived in poorly constructed homes exacerbated the death toll. Furthermore, the timing of the cyclone striking overnight caught many residents off guard, which reduced their chances of seeking safety. In addition to the tragic loss of lives, the material destruction was extensive and severe. The cyclone destroyed homes, crops, roads, bridges, and fishing boats. 
essential for the livelihoods of the local communities. Hundreds of thousands of homes were either completely destroyed or severely damaged, leaving millions homeless and exposed to the elements. The agricultural devastation was also significant. The storm surge, which reached heights of up to 10 meters in some areas, salted vast stretches of arable land, making them unfit for cultivation for several seasons. This damage to agriculture persisted long after the floodwaters receded, leading to prolonged food shortages and economic hardships. The infrastructure of the region suffered enormously as well. Roads and communication lines were destroyed or severely disrupted, hampering rescue and relief efforts. Many areas were cut off from aid for days or even weeks, complicating efforts to provide necessary food, water, and medical supplies. The scale of the disaster overwhelmed local and national resources. The initial response was criticized for being slow and inadequate, partly due to the political turmoil and bureaucratic inefficiencies of the time. The lack of timely and effective response led to further suffering and loss of life. International aid eventually poured in, but the relief operations faced immense challenges due to the scope of the disaster and logistical difficulties in reaching affected communities. The cyclone also had significant political repercussions. The perceived inadequacy of the government's response to the disaster contributed to growing unrest and was a catalyst for the secession of East Pakistan and the subsequent independence of Bangladesh in 1971. The memory of the great Bola cyclone serves as a somber reminder of the destructive power of nature and the critical importance of disaster preparedness and response. It underscores the need for effective early warning systems, community-based evacuation plans and resilient infrastructure, especially in cyclone-prone regions like the Bay of Bengal.